we have like three fantastic folks who are working on actually better ways in which we could be doing things. Um, and uh, so we have Jamie Joyce uh, here, we have uh, Sean Murphy, uh, uh, and um, we have Mindy who are working on quite ambitious projects to actually improve our sense making. And so for the uh, next 15 minutes, I would love to have uh, like quick presentations uh, of all of you guys. Uh, I'm Jamie, uh, do you want to kick us off uh, with the Society Library? I made you co host so you can share slides if you want to, or just uh, give us an idea of how you are mapping arguments right now for COVID-19. All right, so hey everyone. So um, before getting started, uh, I just want to re-presence to what sense making is. It's been described as how we can structure the unknown so that we can take actions on it. And much like Kimberly said, you can sense make from the point of view of a leader uh, so that you can lead people towards some action or it's the responsibility of citizens and perhaps everyone to sense make for themselves. So um, sense making, if you read the uh, MIT handbook on leadership, they often describe sense making as creating maps. And so the Society Library, which is the organization that I work for, literally does that. We extract arguments, claims, and evidence from various media sources, from television and scholarly articles and social media and like 10 more media assets. We extract the arguments and claims and pieces of evidence, and we create a map of all of that content. Um, what we find is that there's these fu fundamental questions, which is the reason why we generally have all these like hypercharged political conversations. And so once we discover those fundamental questions, we start mapping out the arguments from all points of view. Um, in doing this work, uh, I firmly believe that we have to create institutionalized sense making because what I found personally is that outsourcing critical thinking and outsourcing your belief to existing media sources um, is inadequate and oftentimes leads to false information or logical fallacies. So I recently published this article because the Society Library was asked to address the pandemic video. It was a 26 minute vignette. And um, I took the opportunity to walk someone through the process of how you would deeply fact check starting with a claim, going to an expert source, going to a fact-checking website, going to, eventually it led to a Ivy League School Medical Center's blog post where it seemed as though a statement that they had made that to summarize the results of the study actually conflated to something that was a little bit more political than what the actual discussion section of the scholarly article said. Um, and so the only thing to do there was to write to the uh, the researchers themselves and ask for clarification. So we just see that again and again is where we stop in outsourcing our beliefs to some source, some fact-checking site. Um, you really shouldn't stop there. You should go to the original sources if you possibly can and try to interpret them as best you can um, because there's there, the game of telephone, so much can be distorted along the way. And so uh, I can post that article if anyone's interested in learning a little bit more about what I mean, but since I only have so much time, um, I would also like just to offer some recommendations about what an individual person can do um, because the problems that we face, especially on a societal scale, are unbelievably complex. And to literally chase every single argument pathway down to the original datum or source is an immense amount of work. And it's almost, I mean, I, I would say it is too much for any individual to really accomplish. And that's why scaling up sense-making through some institutional process that can be made transparent and rigorous um, and inclusive of the diversity of ideas is really necessary. But what an individual can do is, you know, study one very, like, uh, singular part of a very complex issue and really like trace it down to as many like pieces of data that you can find and then offer your research as a contribution to some project like the society library or other sense making institutions um also uh again sense making is about action and so i think by and large we really do have to rely on outsourcing our critical thinking a lot to media sources of various kinds there's just not enough time in the day but when it comes down to making decisions that drastically impact your relationship with other people um, that's when you should really take it upon yourself to investigate as much as possible so before you unfriend someone for posting something ridiculous or calling them stupid on some public platform um, my my idea is to take any claim that you have if especially if it's a counterclaim to something that someone's posting and just turn it into a question. So if someone's, you know, posting something about pandemic and hydroxychloroquine and you don't think it's a viable treatment, just turn it into a question instead. Is hydroxychloroquine a viable treatment? And then using that phrasing, go and investigate um, the information yourself and then really take care to try and investigate what possible answers 
would be counterintuitive to your thinking, just to diversify the information that you're digesting. Um, and then this is especially important when you have to wield political power. Whenever you're wielding your political power, voting, shutting people down, you know, you have a platform to speak, just um, make sure that you've truly ingested a diversity of ideas and you've traced those down as far as you possibly can, that, you know, that game of telephone through to original sources. Um, always check your sense assumptions. And, um, you know, really try to pursue the truth and avoid the coercive power of group think. Um, Thank it's you. so easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah and I guess the burden of finish the sentence, discover why things make sense. Yeah. Sorry. I was just gonna say, uh, the burden of sense making today is to discover why things don't make sense. And if you want to learn more, societylibrary.org. Yeah, please uh, post, uh, post, post societylibrary.org in the chat as well so people can follow up. Uh, Sean, I'm un making you co-host and I am unmuting you now. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, Let me. So you should be able to share your screen if you want to. Yeah, no need. No need. Um, okay. Oh, I'm trying to get my window up. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's see. So we humans have created some amazing challenges for ourselves. Uh, currently, we're in the midst of this uh, pandemic situation, of course, but uh, it's uh, uh, it's got fake news wrapped all around it. And uh, and then there are the Bill Joy classics. There's uh, biotech, nanotech, AI, robotics. Uh, we've got the climate change problem, biodiversity. Uh, looking beyond those, uh, how are we going to share the world equitably? Where do we want to go together? Uh, how are we going to get there? Presumably, we're agreed that the key to solving all of these problems is, uh, is some sort of collective sense-making approach. We all know that we want it to uh, respect our privacy. It shouldn't sell our data. Um, it, should be ad it shouldn't be ad-supported. Um, it, uh, it, it should not be proprietary. It should be affordable. Um, ideally, it's decentralized or at least uh, federatable. Um, we want it to be as inclusive as democracy should be. We, we want it to be uh, as just as jurisprudence should be, as erudite as academia, as evidence-based as science, as reproducible as software test suites, as introspectable as a debugger. Um, as flexible as conversation. So those are many of the those are the many virtues we want to preserve. But uh, how do we actually architect a system that has those properties and that supports uh, species saleable sense making? So that's what we're doing in the in the Noran project, and uh, and. The way we're doing that is we're building a, some of the key architectural concepts that are that it is human centric rather than being AI centric. It's a, it's a human powered system. That's so that it can be imbued with human values and can aggregate our understanding and engage our investment, our human investment in the process. It's built on a bridge between human understanding and machine understanding, and that's the semantic web in its system of machine understandable knowledge representation. So uh, subject, predicate, object, triples in the semantic web uh, are essentially equivalent to subject, verb, object, the, the subject, verb, object structure of human natural language. So this equivalence um, acts as a ground so that uh, the great conversation, uh, the human uh, cultural um, longitudinal effort to make sense together um, is directly supported by emerging best practices on, uh, on the internet. Um, so- Okay, you have maybe 10 second warning. Oh God, okay. So uh, basically what we're, this is too small a box for me to try. This is like trying to stuff a python into a pill bottle. And uh, and so, yeah. Um. <laughs> That's okay. a good place. That's a good place. This is it. This is the start. This is the start of, uh, of I, I, I would love to come back and, and have a, a larger window in which to try to convey how we're doing this.
Okay, well, uh, maybe okay. you can post uh, links for people to follow up. Uh, you know, I think mm -hmm. uh, you know they can uh, maybe take take some time to familiarize themselves with your project uh, and maybe follow up with you uh, with questions in the in, in the in the end. Uh, next one up, we have Mindy uh, here with uh, five minutes on the Infinity project. All right, so actually, I will share the screen, and um, I will talk about uh, sense making. Uh, so you know, today it is uh, quite easy uh, to align data. Uh, geographically or on time dimension, it is much harder to align sense or intents. And uh, and uh, so there is uh, we, we we are actually I represent the We Find X Foundation, uh, which is in uh, a foundation in Ireland, and we're working on public intelligence for global goals. One of the projects that uh, we're working on is specifically Infinity Project, which you can find on Zero. OO.li, uh, where we discuss uh, about the world's goals, ideas, and, and projects, and much more. And so let me go through the presentation a little bit because I actually uh, took uh, an excerpt and make sure that you can see it uh, you know, on screen. Um, so, um, uh, what we do, we, we're searching for a common language for understanding world's data and systems, which would facilitate the exchange of data for coordination. Uh, between those systems and uh, 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 we believe in the mathematical equation model uh, and want to help humanity to come together to apply this model to coordinate itself and uh, solve the equation together using simple mutually understandable language. So uh, um, we want to turn the world into uh, world management into a rational transparent and systematic process uh, which makes sense uh, and it's easy for everyone to participate. Um, so uh, there are two projects that uh, related to sense making that uh, I'm working with uh, on uh, through the, uh, the organization. And the first is the Infinity Project or Zero to Infinity, which you had seen uh, over here. And, and it relies uh, theoretically uh, on, on, on the work of the WeFindX Foundation. And uh, another is the Metaform. Uh, a tool for normalization of complex data. And uh, the Metaform uh, now allows to do something like that. Uh, you, you can just mount something like Google, mount Facebook. Uh, you cannot yet mount Facebook or Google, but there are other sites that uh, it works with. And it uh, actually mounts the, uh, the web resource to the, as if it's a device on your computer and uh, enables to actually control it or actually imagine that you can just uh, mount uh, zoom and and get all the videos uh, or the recordings you didn't you know as if it's an, an, another desk on your computer uh, so this is metaform and it actually uh, uses one idea in particular uh, meta format uh, which is um, described um, here it actually introduces a very simple concept that I think is simpler than the semantic webs concept and it's probably better than semantics webs concept in the sense that it introduces one uh, concept of a poly context meta symbol which allows to do I, uh, I believe everything that uh, uh, semantic web uh, you know wanted to, to, to do and, and and do it at a lower level through the uh, driver control interfaces. Uh, the other thing uh, regarding the infinity project uh, well uh, uh, well, this is uh, our analysis basically leads that uh, to a conclusion that where each country treats artificial intelligence as a, and data as a strategic weapon, merely signing principles of artificial intelligence uh, safety is insufficient. And we're working on something uh, called uh, an uh, equation ontology. Uh, so everyone knows this equation from the, the elementary school, fx equals y, and uh, we introduce an ontology. And by the way, regarding ontologies, actually I've worked uh, on ontologies, uh, semantic ontologies at the at Purdue University uh, together with uh, uh, Victor Raskin, uh, who's a professor there. Uh, so maybe someone is familiar. Basically, some of the thinking had been uh, inspired, you know, through studies and, and and other activities. So we have got an equality sign. On the left side of the equality sign, uh, we have the uh, we have the world, and on the right side we write what we want. So uh, basically, uh, that's the first level of decomposition. And uh, you can think of the uh, the f from from x like uh, think of the f as a world and x as a processes that parameterize the world, and uh, to uh, to to uh, 
uh, to achieve the equality on the right to, to the right side. So we ourselves actually are some random processes that parameterize the world. And how can we understand or actually uh, provide, uh, you know, uh, understand uh, or actually use the human language, connect with the mathematics uh, intuitively? Uh, so we can interpret the equation as the world uh, we and goals, right? And uh, um, and, and, and then we've got an ontology uh, that we propose uh, basically based on uh, human questions that usually every journalist basically asks: uh, who, where, when, does what, how, and why. And uh, arguably, these questions are fully sufficient to contextualize our activities and to be aware of where we are in the context of the world society as well as in the context of the physical universe. So um, and these are the concepts uh, also who, which correspond to... All right. Uh, yep. Thank you, right. Bindi. So, so just a short... Uh, uh, okay, so sh sh do you have questions? <laughs> how about, um, Mindy, how about you share also the... the, the uh, the website that people can follow up on. And I just said in the chat, yeah. you know, given the fact that, again, you know, we've barely scratched the surface of all of your three amazing projects, you know, five minutes. Just want to, want to, and then one, with one sentence, basically what we're trying to do is create a semantic map to provide those other coordinates, which correspond basically those, we have three coordinates in the space and time and one time, but, but actually uh, you can define extra coordinates for uh, essentially goals, ideas, uh, plans, uh, assets, places, events, which answer the basic human questions that every one of us asks, basically this, uh, those questions, uh, who, where, when, does, what, uh, how, and why. And that's what we're working Thank on, on this you. big model. And, uh, okay. and this is actually a site where we can actually come together and work on it. There's actually a CSV and YAML representation where we can actually uh, see those big uh, you know, tables uh, and we are importing um, you know, data. Okay, to, uh, Mindy, thank you. Um, thanks. I think, you know, if guys, if you have questions, so I, I just said in the chat, you know, this is usually the time in which participants, uh, you know, get to uh, get to share. And I want, would love to hear from all of you guys, uh, you know, how you're making sense of the world. If instead you uh, want to hear more from the speakers and you want more info, then feel free to use that time to give it to the speaker by asking them a question instead. Okay. Uh, I do want to make sure that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, you do get a chance to speak, uh, all of you if, you, if you'd like to. Um, also, you know, I'm, uh, I'm feeling that uh, we may, uh, we, uh, we, we should probably dedicate a little bit more time than, uh, than we could and we could uh, to, uh, to, to maybe do another deep dive or deep dive into those presentations. But for now, I, um, do people want to raise their hand? Um, do you have a question? Do you want to uh, direct a question to any of, the, uh, any of the speakers that are currently on instead? Well, this is very, uh, you know, informative and inspiring. The thing that I see that's missing is ways to get people to work side by side uh, on uh, creating information and confirming uh, necessary vital scientific facts um, in a way that, that builds trust. Um, that is, we are in the exact opposite of the situation of what we need to be. We evolve to see each other's uh, non-visual uh, signals uh, or non-conscious signals, you know, in our faces. Uh, and now we're trying to do everything uh, through the, you know, the internet. Um, Zoom is a little bit better than other, uh, you know, media. But uh, basically, we would work much, we would build, rebuild a lot of the trust that we need if we had projects that, that uh, got people invested in different areas of science and expertise. So I'm, I'm looking for ideas that anyone has about, and I'll continue this on Slack eventually, uh, about uh, getting people to do projects together. Physically. Physically, yes, physically. Physically, like literally physically would be hard to do right now. <laughs> well, right, this is assuming we're getting out of this situation eventually. Okay, good. Um, uh, anyone want to answer that or anyone would like to uh, ask a new question? Uh, you know, I, I definitely hear that should be on, on Slack as well. So thanks for, for already stating that you're going to ask a question on Slack. Uh, anyone else who has a question? Uh, Jamie has a question. I'm going to mute you. Well, I had, a, I had more of a response to Mark, if that's okay. Yeah, so Mark, I don't know if this is exactly what you're looking for, um, but something that the Society Library does is actually teach logic and argumentation. Um, 
So we have like a three week program. And so people can come to us with their own interest. If they have a specific subtopic of interest, that's in line with the topic that we're currently covering. It used to be climate change for the past couple of years. Now it's, it's COVID-19. So if someone comes with us and they have a specific perspective. We actually teach them how to deconstruct the logic of what they think and then go and find counter arguments. So it's a way that they're exposed to a diversity of thinking. And then ultimately, since we're overseeing the work, we benefit because we get to catalog all of the claims that they've found and catalog the evidence that they've sorted through. So um, that's that's something. I don't know if that's exactly what you're looking for, um, but it definitely broadens people's perspective about how to find information, how to check one's assumptions. No, that sounds absolutely great. Uh, this, I'll just One of the ideas I've had is that uh, we could be teaching uh, children at every level valuable skills by having them make some of the measurements that we need to uh, work on climate change uh, in particular, uh, and a lot of these other social issues. And if you invest in children and parents ha seeing that their children are getting results, um, then you, you, you try to create a system where you, you, you basically cannot allow the, the, the you know, the, I have to say it, the Fox News right wing propaganda machine propaganda to basically make all of academia appear to be elite. All right, thank you. Uh, we have uh, Sean as well with an, uh, with it, with an answer here. Hi there. Um, yeah, so Mark, what uh, our approach to that is to support the concept of uh, many voices. Uh, that is uh, the notion of, uh, uh, unlike Wikipedia, which is kind of uh, uh, at any particular moment on any particular page, sort of the result, the resolution, the <laughs> temporary resolution of an edit war, the det uh, detente in an edit war. Instead, we, uh, we've kind of extended the uh, semantic model a bit to, uh, to make it possible for, for diverse, um, contradictory uh, truth claims to basically for all of those uh, um, contra um, potentially contradictory truth claims to be uh, contained like a superposition of, uh, of all those possibilities in, uh, in a single system. And then expose the whole, uh, the whole data set to, uh, uh, to evolutionary pressure. Um, again, and provided where those evolutionary pressures are evidence-based and human opinion-based uh, workflows that, uh, that, that drive the, the, the kind of the late bound um, um, user-driven uh, choice of, um, um, uh, of what they see and when they see it and, and how it gets selected. Is it selected on the basis of, uh, of the, uh, of the um, uh, of the affiliation of the author, of the um, of the um, epistemological status of the um, uh, of the reasoning process that provided the information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, pluggable decision making, um, sense making strategies that are themselves viral. All right. No, I, but... I want to do some more. Sorry, just very quickly say, all these things will not probably efficiently build up friendships. That is the, the way to get people who have divergent views to get along and to work together is to actually create friendships through physical contact. I, that's a strong I don't know, hypothesis I'm working on. Yeah, I definitely agree on that. And I think we're doing that kind of virtually right now. So maybe you don't even have to be in a physical space for that. So at 15 past, uh, let's do another round if the presenters want to, of a deep dive into the things that you just barely had to scratch the surface on because people really, really, really want to hear more. So get ready uh, if you're interested in doing that uh, at Jamie, Sean, and Mindy. Um, I also just want to say, I think, uh, uh, Okay, no, I'll just give it. I'll just give it to Aviv just to conserve time. Okay, Aviv, you go. Oh yeah, I, I just wanted to throw back out that my sort of closing comment, which is that one of the things I see as most important is giving attention to potential crisis scenarios pre-crisis, um, and um, and I'm and I'm curious just from from the audience here, um, and and especially from Kim if she's still around, um, just to hear um, case studies of that. Uh, so examples of times when organizations um, or countries or whatever were effectively able to 
um, resource something wh which had not they had not had previous experience with, um, and what makes that possible for an organization? I think that it's not about sense making; it's about capacity building. Given the sense making that we have, actually have. That's a, um, one of the we talked about this in one of the previous panels. I don't remember if it was the one you were on or not, but someone was talking about how you know a good organizational plan to have is a crisis communication plan. Right. Know in advance if, you know, what, how can we, um, you know, anticipate what sort of crises might happen? And then what would we do or say if that happened? And then, you know, it's much easier to tweak a plan that's already in place than to wholesale create it in the middle of a crisis. Right. And, you know, I could speak in the army, we do this. So, they plan to plan to plan to plan, and it's almost like, <laughs> okay, enough with the planning. It's a, right? it's a little much. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to be cut off here, but but the what I'm wondering is like like that that is part of the culture of the army. So I think maybe that's a good example, um, mm -hmm. and I think I mean armies are a great example where they really do plan through every case, but yeah. we don't have that in the same way. We don't have the same types of planning for public health maybe in, in some areas, at least within, at the level that it needs to be. Um, and what are the ways that you can get your, your leadership, your organization to do this type of, of planning to planning or planning to plan? Um, like, like what are the levers that we can tweak as actors in society, um, whether, you know, at whatever level we're on to make that more likely that, that we're actually going to resource this. Um, as an advisor, I've addressed this in to, um, to senior leaders and said, like, it doesn't work when you call me in at the 11th hour and say, what right. do we do about this crisis? And, you know, what you needed to do was build trust, you know, six months ago or 10 months ago when you were launching the project. Right. right. And so sometimes that, the shortest answer, I guess, shortest, best, quickest answer coming to my head is like, if we can get our decision makers to realize that, you know, 11th hour crisis communication is not effective. So, you know, you need me on your team when we're planning strategies, right. not when we're reacting to them. Okay, yeah, so start planning earlier. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so now we're doing, gonna do another switchback. This is kind of like really uh, trying, sense making sped up on steroids. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think, you know, one thing that uh, a lot of people in the chat demanded was for people uh, who were presenting, uh, you know, their approaches to fill in more details. So I think in the remaining time, I would love for you guys to do that. If there's any specific things that, uh, you know, you haven't covered yet in the presentation before that you'd like people to know, uh, you know, to, to entice them to check out the website, I want to give you a chance to do that now because it's backed by popular demand. Would anyone like to go next? Raise your hand if you're interested in it. Yeah. Yes, Mindy, go for it. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, so uh, it was about the Infinity project, and I didn't even scratch the surface. Uh, so basically, you can come to this project uh, uh, 000.li, and you can start um, discussing here. There are uh, all the data that, uh, so th these are ideas in the section here, uh, which have to be like inventions. Something, uh, for example, uh, if you click on a Hive cell, it's a it's a it's an, an idea of some uh, a beehive cell like capsule hotel like car connectable into buildings and spaces. It has to be some uh, idea with uh, with a set of conditions or defining what it is. If it's a if it's a category or in fact a question, what we do on foresight, what we do on metaculus, what we do on some other uh, think tanks is more often also you know institutes its questioning and. Um, if you um, uh, have a question, uh, you can just uh, post it as a question, and and there's this discussion about that. And and uh, if there is an idea that you want to work on, so for example, I don't know uh, some uh, particular like uh, I don't know organs funded cryonics, um, uh, or I mean you can click on the project and create a project under that idea. Uh, so this is uh, becoming uh, connected so into a graph where where there is um, um, uh, goals or questions uh, are connected to ideas and those are connected to projects and um, 
they actually uh, become a, a graph. We can actually take a look at it at the slash map. And uh, uh, so, for example, the blue, uh, the the green are uh, categories, and uh, the brown now are ideas that uh, that are uh, you know like innovations uh, to uh, address that category or that question or that problem or that goal. So all of those are the same as a you know thought think of them as a category. And then if there are projects that are implementing or thinking you know realizing that idea in practice, so 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 you see blue are projects and. They, um, they are, uh, there was also, so this is the, just the top uh, part of the, of the, uh, uh, of, of, the, of the project. There is also an exchange here. If the project has products, uh, the products uh, you know, can be listed on the exchange. So there are uh, <clears throat> uh, markets for, uh, for various, uh, so consumption, production, uh, <clears throat> objects and um, and then there's also always this uh, uh, YAML view, which is uh, basically just uh, uh, if you want to uh, look at the data and, and uh, you know just download the data. And there's also the CSV uh, view, which links to the Airtables and uh, which actually just have the connect you know that data in this form. So you can actually always download the, and uh, if you want to just have this, this you know, for convenience. Um, so uh, the categories or questions correspond, I mean, co question, categories correspond to questions uh, um, or, uh, or uh, cat uh, purposes, concepts, problems, all of them are under kind of this one question. Then uh, for example, projects are corresponding to companies, uh, well, the world has about 200 million companies and we aim to kind of get all them together into one place as well. So inventions uh, is, uh, you know, methods uh, or uh, so, 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 and so on. So uh, these uh, principles, rationales, algorithms, answers. So we have questions and answers essentially, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, the groups of these concepts actually define the very, you know, uh, those categories which correspond to these tables then. And, uh, and uh, yeah, um, you, if, you, if you want to, we will be having uh, like uh, meet, meetings online on this. So uh, uh, there is uh, meetings uh, and, and there are schedules if you want to join. Uh, so if you want to join, uh, there is this, uh, uh, Events on GCal or, or uh, I can also and also there's escort uh, 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 the Discord channel and uh, the Telegram channel, so you can just uh, consider joining our activities in the in in the future. Uh, they will be on the calendar. So uh, thank that's, you uh, about it. There's other awesome. languages. We're we're looking for someone who would uh, want to contribute to German language, which we don't have yet. But well, <laughs> I am German. Here you go. Maybe if I find some time between this, I, I may help on there as well. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think. Uh, if you want to stop sharing the screen, that would be amazing. Uh, Jamie is also, I think, here and ready uh, to provide more context in the Society Library uh, to entice you a little further to, to check that one out as well. A little further to Library. You are unmuted. You are. Sorry, Allison, can you hear me? Okay, sorry about that. My, I'm having terrible internet issues. Okay, so um, uh, I'm gonna share my screen and just kind of give you a glimpse into how we do things. So a lot of debate mapping projects and a lot of projects that are working on sense making are work to get users onto platforms, to have uh, structured conversations sometimes the frameworks are very rigid and sometimes they're not. The Society Library's method is completely different. Um, we are not trying to onboard users onto a platform to have structured conversations. Instead, what we already recognize is people are having these conversations. They're having it in television, they're having it in news, they're having it in social media. So instead of having a structure on which people can contribute um, their arguments and ideas, we're instead going out and getting those arguments and ideas, which I think um, yields much more effective ways at, at deriving meaning. And so um, let me see if I can share my screen. I'll show you a little, oh, it says disabled, okay. 
And so um, while I'm being, while this is being disabled, you so can. I can share my screen. You thank can. you. Okay, you can. awesome, thank you. Um, and so one of the things that I hope will become evident uh, as I share this is how unbelievably complex language. And so, um, you know, I've heard people recently describe that we are um, in a epistemological crisis. You know, it's, it's very difficult to unpack and know um, how we know things, um, especially since we're not the ones oftentimes generating the ideas, the political and, and social sentiments that we carry forth and we act on. Um, and so a another crisis I say that we are in the midst of is a logical crisis where I don't know if people really truly understand how many claims are packed into our language. So um, here's an example. Um, like I said earlier, per request, we were asked to deconstruct the logic of pandemic. So here you'll see this is the transcript of pandemic. And this is a list of the interpreted arguments and claims from that 26 minute film. And so the Society Library d does this with all the media sources that we um, extract arguments and claims from. So you'll notice that what we've been able to extract in terms of claims, which are just any like statement of whether later proven to be true or not, or fact or opinion, um, claims are, are just some statement as if they were, there's 455 implied and derived claims from this one little vignette. And so what I really wanna drive home and just expressing that is that, you know, who watches Plandemic or who watches uh, news media or who watches this documentary or that documentary and really thinks to themselves 455 times, you know, is that true? And so language is so unbelievably complex and it compacts so much implied and assumed meaning and uh, expressions of truth, that it just flies right by us and we have no idea that it's solely building this context of understanding. And so um, after we rip out claims and arguments from like actual transcripts or news articles or scholarly articles or whatever, um, we then do the work starting to categorize all of this. And like I mentioned before, our work isn't in, um, you know, uh, uh, posting a question and collecting answers, but ours are about finding the questions that people have given what people are discussing. So we categorize the arguments and claims, and I'll show you a demo of our debate mapping software. Um, it's, it's rather not a demo of the software, but it's demo data. Um, so for uh, this is what we call a debate map and it allows us to input category and questions and slowly deconstruct um, the actual argumentation, so these are categories, but slowly we'll begin to actually deconstruct the argumentation um, around, this is the Stanford COVID-19 uh, seroprevalence study. So um, we, we slowly started not only deconstructing the language of the actual study, but we started deconstructing the logic and argumentation in news articles about the study. Um, you know, people had all of these different criticisms, which we categorized, and we slowly broke those down. And what's important about breaking down arguments is you break down all of the implicit um, claims that are in each one, because any claim being a statement of truth is debatable. So once you get into logic and argumentation mapping and you realize every claim is really debatable, you realize how unbelievably massive a task it is to really fact check, um, if not logically interrogate this is just our software for how we input data. Uh, how it actually looks, uh, the front end is, we have a front end. Um, I haven't released it because I'm not satisfied yet. Um, but anyway, this is just demo data uh, because we've kind of been forced by the industry to start working on COVID, even though normally we, um, we're working on climate change. And for climate change, we discovered 220 um, subtopics of debate. And then that's, that implies literally double the amount of positions and then thousands and thousands of arguments for each one of those subtopics of debate. And that's not only about understanding the problem of climate change, but all of these solutions. And so that was debate mapping software. That software, we actually, you know, tear apart the logic and model it. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's what we do. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you got to finish too. I want to give also the chance for Sean, uh, in case you'd like to fill in more uh, on, on, on Nuon. I think I tried to contact you via private and, and public chat here, uh, just in case you want to uh, provide more info on this. Yeah, I certainly would. Thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> sorry, my machine is absolutely crashing under the load of Zoom somehow. And a billion tabs. I'm not sure if the rest of you have a billion tabs. Actually, we're, we're trying to deal with the billion tabs problem. Um, and, uh, and part of the reason that uh, we have a billion tabs is because 
is because bookmarking and uh, and basically the the research process is just so terribly challenging and so poorly supported by our uh, by our current tool set. And um, and so what we're building is a uh, the current iteration of uh, of, um, of Neuron is a um, is a browser extension actually that makes it possible to do knowledge capture right in the browser right at the point of uh, the experience of, uh, of the information and um, um, and so not only is it knowledge capture but it's it's uh, it's basically viewing the the other information that uh, the people that other users of the system have uh, have contributed or captured or asserted about the uh, the page that you happen to be on at the moment and um and so uh so it isn't just uh forms based stuff it isn't just uh a, a tabular um a ponderate a pondering experience that we've uh, that we've hooked up that uh, that basically is a uh um, a collective intelligence values based or evidence and or evidence based um, uh, sense making um, user experience and engine, but also other kinds of, um, of visual of bi directional visualization. So by bi directional visualization, I mean um, uh, that one can manipulate information just as readily in these user experiences as one can express it. So there's a mapping interface, there's a charting interface, there's a, there's a mind mapping interface, uh, and all of these are rooted in in uh, in the same basically universal knowledge model, and that uh, that knowledge model is provided by by this uh, again this this extended semantic web model, um, and and so. At the root of it is uh, is the root of the the sense making process. The collective sense making process is that uh, um, uh, we we make it possible for for diverse contrasting uh, perspectives to be voiced, and for people to uh, and for all the users of the system to be able to 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 process those to to uh, to. Uh, mark those up if you would to to evaluate them with respect to user contributable criteria. So so it's a general purpose engine for building a new kind of software, and that software is web based. It's collective intelligence based at its very root. So where should the collective intelligence go? It should go at the root of a new um, class of um, of internet powered internet-based software. So that's what we're doing. And good Lord, I would really like to get together and have a great, great conversation with the uh, with Ninja Engine because, uh, yeah, it seems like we're all, uh, we're bees uh, drawn to a similar flower. So I'm very interested in exploring their, uh, their approaches. Oh. Wow. Okay. I'm so glad that uh, at least this time around, in the second iteration of this, people had time to finish their sentences. Um, so that's an improvement. Um, all right. Well, you know, I, I do want to say, just to provide some context, I, you know, given the fact that people are dropping off, uh, you know, like at, at the hour, that's why, you know, I kept the presentation so we even actually on time, you know, like, and if I'd known how many people would, would have wanted to stay on, it would have been easier for me to, to redirect time uh, right at the beginning. I hope you, I hope you don't don't take it personally. Uh, I'm really happy that uh, you at least got to finish your sentences now. And uh, you know, in fact, 30 people plus stayed on for this long, so I'm hoping it was worth it for you. Um, I, I hear, um, you know, again, just like a lot of like uh, discussions being opened here. I'm super happy to have seen the demos. They look totally fantastic. Wow, this is. Uh, really amazing, and I, I think it really calls for a deep dive into a deep dive. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, maybe we should uh, start schedu scheduling some demos. I'm still trying to see whether I preserve my own sanity and just focus next week on report writing or whether I actually get something going and have more sessions. Uh, so I can be convinced either way. I think at the moment I'm like, <laughs> um, but this seems like a really, really, really useful thread to pull on further. And especially if it's demos, uh, it doesn't really require very much uh, setting up on my end. It would be amazing. Um, but yeah, so uh, so please talk to me after the session if if, if you want to do that, um, and and I'll, I'll see what uh, see what we can get uh, get get cooking up.
Thank you everyone for staying on. This was definitely the longest that I think we've ever stayed on. We're, we're nearing the two hour mark. Thanks for having so much stamina and powering through. I think it was really worth it. Um, and thank you so, so much uh, to the presenters for like making it concise. Uh, and, and I'm hoping that this is again, you know, just the just the beginning of a, uh, of a longer conversation, you know, sense making. I mean, this is the thing, right? We're trying to do this in an hour. Sense making is really freaking hard, right? That's why many of the podcasts, you know, that I, that I'm, I'm conferring to for sense making are really long form conversations. Um, and so I think, uh, it, it, it may require that uh, to do that better. So I'm hoping that we'll get to that uh, afterwards. So thank you so much for giving us a glimpse into your insane universes. I can't wait to join them. They are really quite fantastic. Um, all right, everyone. I hope you have a lovely, lovely, lovely Tuesday. I'm hoping to see many of you on tomorrow here when we're going to talk about um, very special opportunities for change uh, that were uncovered by COVID-19. Specifically, we're going to talk about a few projects um, that are focusing on uh, ways in which, uh, you know, the urgency around, uh, uh, especially people that are currently incarcerated has just been like uh, through the roof lately, uh, given COVID-19 in prisons uh, that is ramping up, uh, that is ramping up um, case numbers of states as well. And then two specific projects that are trying to make some leeway at, uh, at actually uh, saving lives uh, from some of the most vulnerable populations uh, that, that are currently around, which are those that are behind bars as COVID-19 is sitting prisons. So um, those are two very specific projects. Uh, if you're interested in, uh, in, in talking about those and what you can do right now to um, uh, to uh, to save lives of the some some of the most vulnerable uh, members of society, then uh, please join that tomorrow. Uh, for now, thank you so much. Uh, I can't wait to see many of you tomorrow and, and see how far we can go. <laughs> Have a lovely day. Bye bye, everyone.